The exercise uh, uh, was that each student had to develop an object of which one part was also used uh, in the object of a fellow student. So in that sense, they actually were no longer competitors to, for, to one another, but they had to somehow try to collaborate. They had to look at what was the other one developing, and they had to look for uh, links rather than differences in between the different objects. So actually, what you see against the wall, that's, those are the uh, workshop results. And what we try to do here is we mingle those results with all the parts that were, have been developed before. So that, um, because that's also what happened at bois Like I took a big box with existing parts and pieces and I gave them to the students. So they didn't have to start from scratch, but they were already, there was already a base on which they could build further. Uh, and I thought it was interesting not only to show that, but to show it in combination with the existing parts uh, in order to demonstrate that actually their exercise is uh, a kind of phase within a larger project. And um, that's one thing. And then the other thing I thought was interesting in putting everything together is that it starts to show uh, the identity of the, of the script, so to speak. So the grid is a kind of a... Um, design script that generates certain results and the more results that are created and the more things that are being reconfigured and adapted and uh, reacted upon, uh, the more clear the identity of this script is becoming. So the idea that you somehow see very contrasting, uh, uh, in one object you see a big contrast of material use and of uh, 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 use of uh, parts and then in other uh, objects, you see that people are really looking for the similarities between different parts and try to uh, make an object that is very uh, 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 more homogeneous. What we're trying to do with the project is to kind of uh, try to introduce diversity within modularity by allowing different people to participate. Yes. So that's a bit what this makes this project maybe different from existing modular systems. It's exactly the idea that uh, it's no longer designed by one company or by one person, but it's uh, just designed by a community of like-minded uh, spirits. It's something that is growing and that is becoming more diverse while it's, being, while it's progressing. Because people are reacting on each other's designs. They're, or they're building further on each other's designs, they are editing it, they're adapting it. It's basically a search for a kind of common design language that makes it easier for people to build things together, that makes it easier for uh, people to exchange components, to build further on each, other, each other's ideas, to uh, take things apart and reconfigure. And those are all activities, I think, that are very much related to this network context in which things are rather sampled than created from scratch or resampled. And I'm aware of the dangers of uh, my own project, in a sense, you know, if it becomes too uh, um, omnipresent, it, it, it becomes a threat for diversity as well. I think, of course, there are different levels of participating, eh? like you have the highest level of participation, which is where you really design an object almost from scratch and you design the parts and you produce them. And, and that's really asking a lot of design skills, but also production skills and so on. Like that, I think, is a very niche uh, segment of the people that will be able to do that or that would want to do that. But you could also imagine that you just uh, sell open modular products like lamps or like uh, 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 this, the water boiler or those kind of uh, pro objects that then if you, if you connect that to the platform where people can see well, how other people have been changing uh, that object or how they have been using certain parts of that object to make again other objects, uh, that's already a much more accessible uh, level of participation. But it's exactly that mentality that I want to uh, stimulate uh, through the design. Imagine that this lawnmower and this bicycle would be built on the same kind of grid and that they would already be designed, pre-designed in order for these things to happen. It would be easier. It would be easier. So this is really, and that's I think the core of the project that it's really trying to stimulate and facilitate uh, improvisation, uh, hacking, uh, building things together.
but also, also taking things apart, repairing things yourself, uh, simply by uh, basing all the designs on this kind of common grid. So you, you wouldn't have to weld, you wouldn't have to drill, it just becomes easier. Yeah, well, I think uh, first, like what we're trying to do is not new. Like uh, modularity has been existing for uh, decades and uh, um, various proposals have been developed by, as well by architects as by designers. The only difference is, now, is that we're developing a modular system now within a networked context. So uh, it's actually the context that is kind of changing the, uh, the whole concept of modularity. But like for me, if you ask like what was what I've been I've been doing these eight years, it's trying to understand that, trying to understand what is the right grid. Is it five by five centimeter or is it four by four? What kind of objects will it generate? What's the typology? In what case will it use? Uh, will it be uh, useful? In what case won't it be useful? Will it be useful for things that need to change, not for things that need to be hyper efficient? Um, how will these things evolve over time? Which parts will be successful? Which parts won't be successful? And now I'm at this point where I'm trying to uh, consider, okay, what could be the economical model behind uh, this system? I think these ages we use to just to research and just to, uh, and to research by doing, by experimenting, by prototyping, not only the uh, objects, but also imagining or thinking about, okay, if you have these objects, if you have this kind of platform, then what kind of spaces could this generate? What kind of um, activities, especially that, what kind of activities could it generate? Uh, and also what kind of um, uh, rules and behaviors in between people and what kind of relations in between people could this generate? It's not about the scale in this project, not at all. It's more about the learning. It's about, you know, because we're moving towards uh, a network society. And I think these kind of projects, they help me as a designer, but maybe also, you know, through exhibitions, a wider audience, better understand how networks function and what, what it, how we could use them uh, for the benefit in the most beneficial way. Because, uh, yeah, the networks can also, of course, be abused. And, uh, and really, this project is a search on how could we use our networks in a way that brings a, a benefit or advantage to everybody who contributes to it. That's really the, the mission. And whether that's now really becoming massive or, or very big, or whether that's now just a, a community of 20 enthusiasts, that's, that's of really of uh, less importance, I think. Because what is important is that it connects like-minded spirits, and that's really what, what it is doing today. Like the people I'm meeting through this project, are really people to, to which I can connect. I think I'm happy with, um, with the insights and the understandings that I, that I got from doing this research. I think I'm not happy with the stage the project in because it's still a research project. It's still a project that is shown uh, in, a, in a place like this, in an exhibition maybe, or in a gallery, or in a, and, but it's not a reality yet. I would hope that we reached almost this end state of uh, research and that we might move towards uh, okay, how, this question of how could we now really push it into reality? How could we maybe attract producers? How could we make it also attractive for uh, users? Uh, how could we make it attractive maybe for resellers and so on so that we could really, it could become uh, something that is really alive that is no longer living in a laboratory, but that is really living in society.